During lab 2A, we are using restriction enzymes to cleave the DNA plasmids in specific locations. For this lab, we are using the P-ERA-R plasmid that contain all the DNA components required to produce red fluorescent protein, or RRP. Let's review these components. Shown in black is the ORI, or the origin of replication site. This is the place where DNA replication begins, enabling a plasmid to reproduce itself, as it must, to survive within cells. Plasmid replication is usually different from host chromosomal DNA replication, but shares the same machinery inside the cell to make an additional copy. The ampicillin resistance gene is shown in dark blue. This gene confers resistance to the antibiotic, meaning that all cells that take up the plasmid with this section of DNA can grow in an environment that contains ampicillin. This is an especially important selection mechanism that is widely used in cloning to help specifically select cells with the correct DNA fragments required to express the gene of interest. Next, we come to the ARC gene, PBAD promoter, and RFP gene. The PBAD promoter controls the expression and production of RFP. The ARC gene codes for a protein that regulates the transcription of genes under the control of the PBAD promoter. In the absence of the sugar arabinose, the ARC protein binds to several regions of the promoter, creating a loop in the DNA and effectively preventing any downstream transcription from happening. In the presence of arabinose, the sugar binds to the ARC protein, releasing it from binding upstream of the promoter, releasing the DNA loop formation, and allowing for RNA polymerase to bind and transcribe the downstream gene, which in our case is RFP. In this lab, we will be digesting the PRR plasmid with two restriction enzymes, BAMH1 and HINDI3, to produce two DNA fragments. The shorter fragment, at 807 base pairs, contain the PBAD promoter region as well as the RFP. The longer fragment, at 4,495 base pairs, contain the remaining three components of the plasmid. For a physical illustration of the cut and paste nature of plasmid recombination, as you would do in labs 2 and 3 during the complete series. The ABE program does provide a clone that gene paper activity that students can do to visualize the cut, paste, and recombination of DNA fragments into plasmids. This activity is described in the ABE Teacher's Guide, which also contains the reproducible master pages. During this lab, students will be manipulating small volumes of reagents for the first time. It is especially critical to have the correct volumes and therefore correct reagent ratios in order for this experiment to succeed. It is imperative that students only push the pipette plunger down to the first stop prior to drawing up a reagent, and to the second stop when dispensing the reagent into another tube. Remind students to never jam the tip anywhere, onto the pipette, into the reagent tube, or into the reaction tube. For teachers, this laboratory takes some advanced planning and preparation. Remember to thaw reagents on ice when possible and to centrifuge all tubes before opening them to avoid volume loss as you pop off the lid. It is also a good idea to calibrate the water bath, heat block, or incubator to the required temperature at least a day or two before you conduct the experiment. On the day of the experiment, before you start setting up the rest of the lab, turn on the heat source or sources and allow them to come to temperature by the time the class starts. When possible, stagger the experimental start times of your students to avoid overcrowding at the water bath or heat block or incubator, or ask students to leave their experimental reactions on ice for you to collect and incubate together once they have completed the experimental setup. 